Saudi oil fields, American oil fields, OPEC, they're on the decline. If we don't get to get it together and start spending billions and billions to develop new oil, we are not going to have enough oil to meet with demand. Okay, and I'm going to discuss that further reading a few news articles. If you like this channel, uh, please subscribe. I talk about all the latest oil and gas news and how it affects uh, today's oil prices. Right now, WTI crude is $107 a barrel. Brent crude, $111 a barrel. And natural gas is $7.30 in MCF. Nigeria says OPEC is out of spare capacity. OPEC does not have the additional spare capacity to lift crude oil production much more than it is doing today. Many OPEC producers, including Nigeria, are currently pumping at the peak of their capacities. There is absolutely a supply problem in the oil sector right now. Jeff Curry, global head of commodities at Goldman Sachs, told Bloomberg earlier this week. In February, the OPEC Plus group continued to severely underperform in its oil production levels compared to the target in the pact, with February output at more than 1 million barrels a day, the collective quota. So they're producing a million barrels a day less than what they should be producing, okay? And so if you don't know what OPEC is, it's a group of oil-producing countries, okay, in the Middle East, all right? Russia is a part of OPEC+, plus, Saudi Arabia being one of the biggest, okay? Now let's just look at Saudi oil production. Back in uh, uh, March when Russia and Saudi Arabia decided to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and flood the markets with cheap oil and increase their production at the highest level possible, it flooded the markets with oil and it reduced oil prices down to the low 30s, okay? And then we dropped production here. So you went from 12 million a day and dropped down to roughly uh, 7.5 million, okay? And now, as, as you can see here, there's a gradual incline here. Uh, so we go from producing about 8 million a day and increase about uh, 8.4 million a day and uh, get up to 9 million each month. They're increasing about 400,000 uh, barrels of oil a month. Okay. And so we climbed from 8 million up to 10 million, but look here, it's gone flat. Okay. Why aren't we seeing an increased production with Saudi Arabia? Well, here's why. Okay. And so if you look here, Saudi Arabia's uh, reserves are overstated. All right. This is a great article. Uh, before moving on to demand, I want to address one final supply issue, Saudi Arabia. The world has been operating under the long-held assumption that the kingdom was the supplier of last resort. It is widely believed the Saudis could produce 12.5 million barrels a day, leaving it with spare capacity of 2.5 million barrels a day. The truth of the matter is they have never produced at that rate. Those extra 2 million barrels came out of Saudi inventory. So they were lying about how much oil they were producing. They're simply maxing out their production capacity and taking from their reserves, okay? And so if you look here, from January 2016 uh, to January 2020, uh, Saudi inventories have declined more than 50% since late 2015, which means they don't have enough oil to keep up with demand. Okay. Now, the other issue is the kingdom's actual oil reserves currently estimated to be 266 billion barrels in 89. They were miraculously increased from 170 billion barrels to 266, despite daily producing of 9 to 10 million barrels a day. How could their oil reserves have remained unchanged for nearly 30 years despite their annual production of close to 3 billion barrels of oil every year? The Saudi response is that. They simply replace what they produce with new discoveries. Why are their unchanging reserves production capabilities and spare capacity simply accepted despite the fact their largest oil fields, Guar 1951, Santa Fe 1957, Anifa 1964, Barry 64 were discovered more than 50 to 70 years ago and are now in decline. Experts in the field believe the kingdom's true spare capacity is closer, closer to a half a million barrels a day than the widely claimed 2.5 million barrels a day. When it comes to oil, there are really only five key players, Saudi Arabia, Russia, U.S., Iran, and Iraq. 
Of the five, only two, Iran and Iraq, have the greatest potential to increase production, the greatest potential for new discoveries. Listen, Saudi Arabia is overstating their reserves, overstating how much oil they can produce. And if you look, what's happening here, they have flatlined, okay? And so the world believed that Saudi Arabia could, in fact, produce more oil. But, I mean, that's no different than a short man saying they're an inch higher, taller than they really are. I mean, these guys um, have lied to the world, okay? And so most oil comes from giants 75 years ago. Factor in that much of our oil comes from just about 25 oil fields discovered over 75 years ago with most of them already in decline. And future supply becomes even more uncertain. The world 507 giant oil fields, those that produce more than 500,000 barrels a day make up 1% of all oil fields, but they produce 60% of the current oil supply. The majority of these fields are over 50 years old, with the largest guar, Saudi Arabia, discovered in 51, Bergen, Kuwait, 45, Sanofia, Saudi Arabia, 57, Romalia, Iraq, 55, Bolivar, Venezuela, 1977, uh, 1917, Samaltor, Russia, 64, Kuruk, Iraq, 1934, Barry, Saudi Arabia, 1964, Manifa, Saudi Arabia, 1964, and Shabah, Saudi Arabia, 1998. The study of these oil fields documented in the Frederick Robelius book, Giant Oil Fields, The Highway to Oil, it is key takeaway being that once these fields, oil fields peak, enhanced recovery techniques may postpone their decline, but at the added expense of more rapid decline later, most of these fields are are already experiencing 67% decline rates, and we are simply not discovering giants anymore. Simply said, it will become progressively more difficult for new discoveries to replace declining production from existing giants. Even trying to replace these declining fields will take trillions of dollars of new investment, which is not happening. Investment peaked in 2015 at uh, a, tr a trillion dollars falling to 583 billion by 2016 with the plunge in oil prices hundreds of billions of needed investment has been canceled or postponed instead since 2016 the mantra on wall street for energy companies was to slash expenditures by uh, buyback stock and increase dividends with the exception of companies like exxon mobil few companies were investing in upstream operations even if investment began today, it will take time and money to find any to find and then bring production online. Given the damage done by shut-ins, many of these wells will not be coming back online. The industry has never witnessed anything like what it, it has experienced over these last few months. It may seem far-fetched right now, but given these dynamics, one can imagine that a new oil price cycle has begun leading toward another future oil shock. Guys, listen. Shale oil and gas peaked in 2019. And all of those wells that we drilled are declining. Listen, Saudi Arabia's oil fields, Russia's oil fields, all of these other oil fields, they are conventional oil. Conventional oil just simply means that they have higher porosity. They don't need massive fracks like U.S. shale. So their decline curve is much slower as where shale it's the most expensive barrel of oil to produce, and the decline curve is 10 times faster, much faster, okay? So here's the deal. Shell is on the decline. We went from producing $6 million under Bush at $140 oil and then uh, to, to 13 million barrels a day under Trump, and we dropped down to $50 oil, okay? Shell is on the decline. We've already dropped 2 million barrels a day. Uh, Saudi Arabia is on the decline. All Every oil field is on the decline. And just like that article said, we need to spend trillions to get back. That isn't happening, guys. We're on this green tech wave, which is wonderful. But the problem is, is that the green tech doesn't exist. As long as you have to use a lithium battery, it ain't green. You need electricity. You need the infrastructure for electricity. We're nowhere near having the infrastructure that we need to replace fossil fuels. 
Not even close. We need trillions of dollars for infrastructure. We need 30, 40 years. We need trillions of dollars to advance green tech. We need to spend trillions on lithium mines. Guys, it's a pipe dream. I mean, there's a lot of politicians getting rich off this thing. Sure. I mean, why not make billions? But the thing is, is that, I don't know if politicians are making billions, but somebody is. But here's the deal. It ain't working. And look at where energy prices are today. Let's uh, get into a few more articles here. So Russia sees steepest oil production decline since May 2020 in early April. Russia's production is on the decline. I mean, they don't have enough oil tanks to hold their oil. They're not able to sell it all, so they have to reduce their output. U.S. Congress bans imports from Russian crude. I think a lot of us already know that, but uh, we have officially banned their crude from being imported. Okay, And so we've lost a half a million barrels a day just from not importing Russian oil. Okay, U.S. shakes finger at India for Russian oil imports. We are trying to shame India into stopping Russian oil imports. Okay, and so in time, they will stop importing that oil. Okay, and how do we replace it? Saudi Arabia doesn't have any extra oil. The U.S., we're far from producing enough oil to be able to, to fulfill Russian contracts. I mean, we're talking about 3 million barrels a day on the chopping block, and it, it doesn't exist, guys. Uh, major oil traders cut Russian crude purchases starting next month. So a lot of the major uh, oil purchasers are cutting off Russian oil in the coming months. OPEC warns the EU that the replacing of Russian oil will be nearly impossible. They are most definitely correct. Replacing Russian crude oil lost by a possible ban from the EU would be nearly impossible, OPEC Secretary General uh, said. We could potentially see the loss of more than 7 million barrels a day of Russian oil and other liquid exports resulting from current and future sanctions or other voluntary actions. Considering the current demand outlook, it would be nearly impossible to replace a loss in volumes of this magnitude. The EU has not yet banned imports of Russian oil and gas, but the new humanitarian rights issue have triggered an increased fervor in replacing potentially banned Russian barrels in an effort to choke off Russia's income stream. Listen, they are on the chopping block. It's only a matter of time until Russia gets cut off. And so Russia is dropping bombs in Ukraine and every country is trying to cut them off, but they can't. And so they're waiting to replace energy before they go cutting them off. Otherwise, it would destroy their economy. So they're doing this in a timely way. And so they're waiting for America and other countries to increase production so there's enough oil. Okay. And so that's going to take some time. All right. But the thing is, that means we got to get it together. We got to produce a lot more oil. But this could speed up the process here of losing Russian oil. Russia threatens nukes in Baltic if Sweden, Finland join NATO, okay? Um, Russia already has nuclear weapons in the Baltic region, says uh, Lithuania. Uh, Russia already has nuclear weapons in the Baltic region, Lithuanian defense minister. On Thursday, one of the Russian president, Vladimir Putin's closest allies, warned NATO on Thursday, that if Sweden and Finland joined the U.S.-led military alliance, then Russia would have to bolster its defense in the region, including by deploying nuclear weapons. Guys, when Russia was threatening to invade Ukraine, I didn't, I, I, I kind of believed it, but I didn't believe it. And here we are. I mean, they're killing innocent people. They're destroying lives as we know it. And America has made threats. NATO has made threats. And Putin has not backed down. And now he's making threats about nuclear bombs. If that happens, we're going to lose 8 million barrels a day overnight. Nobody's going to buy their oil anymore. It's going to be game over. Okay. And the demand for oil is growing. I mean, if you don't, here, here's, a, here's what you need to understand. The Americas have been using oil for years. Uh, 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 we've peaked as far as our demand here in America, okay? The, the, the demand for oil is growing, but at a very slow rate. But if you compare it to other countries, we only focus on the Americas, but the rest of the world wants to be like America. Their demand is growing substantially. So if we have a recession here in America, 
the rest of the world, there's other parts of the world that their demand is increasing, okay? And so although our demand is flatlining, the, the demand for oil is growing. Our demand, they're estimating that by the end of this year, our demand will reach as high as 104 million barrels a day. We've never reached those levels before. While Russia's on the chopping block, while OPEC and, and many other nations, their old oil fields are declining, shell oil is on the decline. And the EIA is, is funded by America, is saying things that just simply is impossible, okay? And so maybe demand won't grow to 104 million at the end of this year because of what's happening in the economy, but our economy is pretty strong. Saying that we have low unemployment, uh, our economy is strong, uh, we're about to go into summer. Oil prices, gas prices always go up uh, during the summer. Um, oil prices hold gains despite major crude inventory build. Now, this is laughable to me. The only reason why there's a crude build is quite simply because we are buying Russian oil right now. And the reason why we're buying Russian oil is because we are fulfilling our contracts and our obligations, but then we cut them off, okay? And so we've already cut them off. We're not buying any more Russian oil. So we're, we're, we're releasing a million barrels a day from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, and then we're also buying Russian oil. Guys, we are heading for some treacherous times for energy prices, okay? And we need to produce oil uh, like we never have before. But the problem is, is that the message has already gone throughout the world that fossil fuels is destroying the world. It's the reason why we have hurricanes and global warming and all these things. We only have so much time to fix the problem. That message is done. And Biden, the whole left, would seem so hypocritical, so ignorant, if they admitted and say, hey, guys, we were wrong, and let's go ahead and retract everything that we said, every single debate, every time we attacked Trump, and we're basically saying, hey, Trump was right, but there's way too much pride. They are so prideful. They are, and they, they are so prideful that they're willing to destroy the country, the world. I'm here to tell you guys, we are not going to be able to keep up with demand. I think we're going to be at very high oil prices for a long time. I think it's going to fluctuate with the economy going up and down. I think we might be going into a recession, but even in a recession, the, the demand for oil might flatline because America might lower the demand, but other countries, their demand is increasing. They don't have to have a tenth of the economy we have to grow because they have nothing in comparison. We need oil. The demand for plastic is growing substantially. Every single cell phone, every single Tesla, every single thing you see manufactured needs oil. The demand, green energy, is simply used as energy alone. But fossil fuels, oil, there's hundreds of byproducts for oil. All right, guys, I'm Sean Pruitt, president of Kingdom Exploration. If you like this channel, please subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment uh, below. And if you're interested in looking at oil and gas, uh, please uh, uh, go to the description. There's a link in my uh, description there. Fill out the form. I would love to chat with you. Thanks.